Right, this is called The Benefit of Hindsight, and it's, it's like, I wish I could go back in time 40 years when it was the miners' strike, because I had a row with them, well, one of them, or two of them, actually, but, uh, yeah, I wish I could go back in time and, and, and make it not happen, you know, hence the name, Benefit of Hindsight. In 84, during the miners' strike, a crowd of Kent miners came to our town and I met a man who took a dislike to yours truly upon me sitting down at his table as men of militant renown mingled with locals supporting their fight in the Labour Club bar one Friday night. The Kent miners, as I recall, were here all week fly picketing the docks by day and nightly partaking of the cheap beer, soft beverages and food, not to say free lodging on the club room floor on which they slept, courtesy of the club committee, long since disbanded and more's the pity. I sat next to Tanya, not a real name, a girlfriend of sorts. She told me about these miners she drunk with when they first came to town two nights ago. She being out with a friend and... And I seriously doubt the two miners have considered she might have a boyfriend, let alone invite him along to a follow-up meeting. In any case, their feelings toward me, given the cold and indifferent greeting consisting of a handshake half-heartedly proffered by a bearded man who had to be at least 40 and the look of disdain on his burly mate's face seemed pretty plain. The bearded man alerted my alarm, having evidently taken offence at me kissing Tanya and putting an arm around her awkwardly and with a sense of self-consciousness very intense. We've had to leave our wives at home, he said, and his mate glared as if wishing me dead. The bearded man then patiently suggested I remove my arm in view of his frustrated fellows and I complied as requested, but his mate appeared still aggravated, maintaining, as it were, a look of hatred simmering with psychotic intention as the bearded man put to me a question. So what's your politics then? He inquired, and I naively, politely replied, I haven't got any which got him all fired up, even more so when I further implied that MPs are all the same, whatever side they claim to be on, and as for ourselves, most people are mainly out for themselves. What do you mean? yelled his furious mate as he flicked a match that landed on my top and burnt it, an undeniably straight up challenge which I chose to drop, disregarding his impertinent pop in consideration of his largeness, which I judged to be twice mine, more or less. There followed a condescending address given by the bearded man concerning the sense of political awareness I apparently lacked for want of learning. In a patronisingly faux-discerning manner, he said we need to care for each other, like he was some kind of wise big brother. But he was obviously taking a piss, and all I could do was pretend to listen, nodding as he lectured on about this and that, like a preacher on a mission, or more like a man in a position of power over a rabbit or deer caught in the lights of a van in top gear. Arthur Scargill, Arthur Scargill, well support you evermore, well support you evermore, rang out as the burly minor ladies pour on Tanya, all but embracing her, and what's more, Tanya didn't mind. Least not from what I saw, watching their faces draw toward the last straw, i.e. a snog, or maybe merely a quick kiss goodbye, which either way was very much remiss to my jealous mind. I reflexively jumped out of my chair in the interests of pride, and my rival responded aggressively. Yeah, come on then, you little cunt, he cried, and to be honest, I'd have probably died if his mate hadn't grabbed me by the scruff and told me that I wasn't man enough, all the while keeping the pair of us apart. I heard Tanya shouting, come on, let's go. And the next thing I knew, she'd made a smart exit, heading home with yours truly in tow. And what followed, no one else needs to know. Suffice to say, a short while later, I 
was chucked in favour of a manlier guy. Funny thing, not long after the event, I saw the bearded man on TV. Him being the shop steward of the Kent Miners. And there he was on the BBC News. And his first name turned out to be Pat. A worthy anecdote, if not a claim to fame. If I only knew his surname. The other morning, whilst out dog walking, I was thinking out loud, as I often do, presently imaginatively talking to the bearded man and his colleague too. And when he asked for my political view, I answered, armed with 40 plus years worth of knowledge. I'm sorry, but how on earth is that relevant? Tantalisingly leaving him hanging before I told him I was very left wing and thus he adopted a noticeably less cold demeanour to all my 22-year-old self, with a show of reluctant respect upon receiving further pools to reflect on my insightful opinions. But then, pondering the benefit of hindsight, if I had my time all over again and took up the chance of making things right, I'd most likely run out of poems to write. Hence, on second thoughts, I left my young self to figure things out from his place on the shelf.